Alhamdulillah, he was on Allah who was Salam Ala Nabi and Muhammad and Wala Ali, he was Sahbihi Ajmain. So we finished up some of the hardest chapters, or like um, some of the most difficult chapters, which were, of course, the ones that have to do with Mu'amalat. So we finished up those. And then in the last cl uh, class yesterday, we finished up um, all of the uh, all of the talk about miras and like all of the inheritance. And of course, this is an introduction. You can you can take this. What we studied here is a brief introduction to the to the end. That is very big. Um, so the next thing we're going to talk about is like. Uh, is like miraf because it's something that happens at the at the end of someone's death, and of course there's multiple things. When someone dies, of course they have to um, any of debts that they have, they need to be paid. So like when someone dies, that's the first thing that you look at the money that's there and you pay off any of the debts that are around there, and also you look to the money and make sure that this person is is um, that he's covered, like he has something to he has the cloths to cover him, and that he can be buried and for like the burial costs, and then you take that from the the beginning of the money. Uh, out of all of his money right away without uh, without looking at is it from the one third or not that he's allowed to give out afterwards and then after that uh, then we would look at any of his and we would look at the one third that he has available to give out to others and then you would um, and give that out and this is what um, this occasionally is what someone would have as a part of their inheritance that someone actually divides for themselves so they say when I die I want my such and such to go to so and so so, or I want this, that, or the other to go to so-and-so. As long as this isn't more than one-third, then there's no problem with this. They can, they can say whatever they want. When I die, this can go to so-and-so. And this is called wasiyah. Um, and so, and it's also um, isal, uh, which is like giving something um, to someone. Um, and so, or like uh, wasiyah is also like wasalahum. Like, uh, it's like it gets it to someone. And so, in, in general, this is um, giving someone something tabarru'un bihaqqin mudaf wa law taqdiran liman ba'd al mawt and so this is um, this is giving giving away something uh, that uh, that is like uh, contingent mudaf is like contingent to what it comes after your someone's death so they can do this in a, in a certain sense and they can give this to certain people. And he's going to talk about um, some of this ahkam that goes along with this. And this is a little different, and it's also not tadbir. As we talked about tadbir, is when someone um, says to their slave, on my, on my death, you become free. When I die, you're free. And that, that's tadbir, that's not quite wasiyah. That's, that's different. And, um, and, and so the, the, also, this is uh, important to understand that what the wasiyah, someone should never do this in a way that harms the inheritors. So say someone has two kids, and he knows that, um, he, and he wants to make a wasiyah for one of these two kids that are going to inherit from him, and, he want, and he's going to give something to one of them and not give it to the other. So in this case, this is something that is haram for him to do a wasiyah for this person. Um, but we'll talk about this uh, here as, as a, uh, in general, giving wasiyah to, like, whether it's to charities, organizations, or for people he knows that are in need um, and whatnot. This is something that is a good thing for someone to do. He says here, What tajuzul wasiyatu bil ma'lumi wal majhuli wal mawjudi wal ma'lumi. So he says here, What tajuzul wasiyah bil ma'lumi. So with something that is known. So you can do a wasiya with something that is an actual known thing. Uh, and this is the um, this is something, even if it's a small amount of something, if it's just two, um, two kernels of corn or something very small, there's no problem with doing this. And it's not like, as we talked about, like buying and selling, where we're really like, we close down. When we're buying and selling, we have to close down and make sure it's an actual thing with all these conditions. But this is giving something after someone dies. So it's almost like, have we, we talked about a hiba? which is when we give out things, then when, they, when we give it out, there's, it's more open to what we can give out. We can give out anything that we can sell and more. Like some of the things that we won't necessarily have, uh, uh, maybe it's like nudges or something of this sort. Um, and we could, give, we could give someone a dog, you know, like this is okay to do. And the same thing with the wasiyah. You can, you can have the wasiyah um, to give a dog to somebody. And this is something that is known. And he also says, well majhul. And so even if something um, that you don't know for sure about, um, you can also do this. Uh, you can also do this majhul, and this could be something that uh, is like an actual thing that you're not exactly for sure. Say there's a there's money that you have that's coming in, and you don't know exactly how much it's going to be. But you say I want the money from this that comes in uh, when I die to go somewhere, 
uh, to go to this place uh, or to go to this person or whatever. And he doesn't know how much money, money it is going to be coming from this, but he, and so it's unknown. But he can make the wasiyah. There's no problem with that, even though it's unknown. And also like that is um, if he has like, uh, also like this is if he has, say he has a, um, like an animal that is uh, pregnant. And so like the, the, the baby inside of this, we don't know what this is, but he can do wasiyah for this baby to be for someone. So, and even though we don't know what this is, and of course you can't sell that, but this is something you can do a wasiyah with. And he also says, wal mawjudi wal ma'dum. So you can do a wasiyah with something that is mawjud, which is, um, of course, anything that is actually present now, or with something that is ma'dum, um, such as with like the, the, like the fruit that will come from an orchard. After a certain time, you can say, I want the fruit from this orchard that isn't there now, but that's going to come, inshallah, uh, to, um, to be there. Or um, whatever this, this particular, um, say you have a, a, a bunch of livestock, and you say, whatever is born from this livestock, I want it to go here. So this is something that's also, um, that can be done. So also for someone, something that's mawjud and something that's mawdur, uh, a ma'dum. And so it really opens up, this opens up the spectrum of how someone can do the wasiyah as opposed to all the other things. Of course, like with the hibba, you can't, you can't do a hibba with something that isn't mawjud. It has to be mawjud. Um, and, and, and of course, with the condition that he actually takes it. <coughs> Wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And we're starting with, uh, with the wasiya. That was it again. <clears throat> so he says here, uh, wahiyya, the next thing he talks about is wahiyya mina thuluth. So the wasiya is something that comes from the third, as I mentioned there. This comes from the one third that the person is allowed to do when he's on his deathbed. Now, of course, what does this mean when he's on his deathbed? Whenever he's in a sickness, and that could be leading to his death in that case, or if he's on, say, he's on a, um, a plane that's crashing and he does a wasiyah, okay? This, he only has one third to, to give away on, uh, on that or do any transactions. So all of this comes from that one third that he's allowed to do. All of the wasiyah is um, from that. Anything more than this third, this is for the inheritors. So he can't do more than, the, uh, more than that. Um, so all of the wasiyah has to be limited to this one third, as we talked about in the Bab of Hajar. Uh, where the person who is on his deathbed can only do uh, can only give away things more than one th and he can only give one third of his wealth away also like this is the wasiya because this is after his death so he can only do a wasiya with one third of his wealth he can't do more than this and he says fa in zada wuqif ala ijazatil waratha so what if he did more than uh, one third in this case it would be a wuqif like this would be um, stopped or it would be halt, uh, put on hold, you know, you could say put on hold in this case, um, until the waratha, they uh, allow it. Because this is ultimately their right. So if, if he goes over a thuluth, anything over that thuluth is the, the right of the <coughs> waratha, like the, the inheritors, whoever's going to inherit from them. And if these inheritors decide that, okay, it's, a, it's fine for his wasi, I want it to go through, in this case, he can do it. But if he doesn't, uh, if they don't give, they don't give permission, then then it, they would not uh, that inheritance wouldn't or that wasiyah wouldn't go through with more than that one third. So he only has one third on that. And of course, if there's multiple inheritors, some of them can say yes and they lose their right, and the other ones could say no and they get the right that would come to them normally. Um, so it would be um, broken up. Each individual has the right to uh, to take his his right with um, uh, for himself or to give his right to what his um, father or whoever the relative is that was doing the wasiyah with. And he also says, وَلَا تَجُوزُ الْوَسِيَّةُ لِوَارِثٍ إِلَّا أَنْ يُجِيزَهَا بَاقِي الْوَرَثَةِ And that's why I mentioned just a little bit at the beginning. And he says, it's not permissible. لَا, يج, uh, لا, لا تجوز الْوَسِيَّةِ Which is like for him to um, say, this is for one of the people that's already inheriting from him. Because ultimately, Allah has set all of the, um, Allah has already set all of the, um, the, the fard and all of the rights of the people f that are going to inherit. Allah has broken up the wealth. Equally, as, the, as, as Allah in His divine wisdom knows who should get what. So for someone to say, I want, I want my daughter to get this, as opposed to everyone else. 
and I wanted to get extra in this way. You know, as opposed to everyone else. In this case, Allah already broke down your wealth for your daughter and for the rest of the people. And for you to do this, this is dhulm on the rest of the people. Because he's ultimately, if he does this, he's taking um, from that one third that would normally be split out without, with the rest of the, the people. And so he's hurting the rest of the, the waratha with this action. So what if he does this? Uh, and he says here that there's la tajus, that he can't do this unless, of course, unless the rest of the people, unless the, the rest of the inheritors, they agree to it. But in, in general, this is, uh, this, is not, this is not permissible for, uh, for him to do. But if, say, the rest of the people that are there, they're all fine with it. Say they know that this person needs help. Um, say this person is a sick person, he needs extra help. And so they're all fine with um, him having extra. Okay, and this is fine with their permission. It's fine to do. But other than that, there's no wasiyah for warith. And of course, this is uh, from what the Prophet وسلم, says in the hadith, Allah wasiyah li warithin illa an um, warata, which comes in uh, Bayhaqi. And so this is a, and this is of course um, very important because this occasionally is, um, people will think that they can do whatever they want with the money after their after their um, after they pass away they can divvy it up how they want. No, Allah has already made the the inheritance for the inheritors, and there's no giving the inheritance to any of the inheritors that are already there. Um, but rather, Allah has broken that up in the proper way. Yeah. So. For example, let's say you have a kid who is disobedient, <coughs> he's, you know, you don't like him because he's going to astray, right? But he's not in Kufa, but he's, he's mischief or, you know, slum, you know, issue between you and the kid. And you want to take him out like the Kufa do. Can you? No, no, no. He gets it. He gets it. No matter what. He, it's his right. It's his right because he's your kid. Yeah. Even if he's a terrible kid, even if he's bad to you and all this other stuff, he's still your kid and he still gets the right. Yeah. Yeah, there's, no, there's no picking and choosing who gets the... Uh, from the inheritors, Allah, you see kumullahu fi awladikum. Allah, he's the one who, who, who tells you what to do with the money for uh, fi awladikum, like uh, when it comes to the inheritors. And Allah divvied this up with them, regardless of what your relationship with them is, there's, not, there's, no, um, there's no talk about this, you know. As long as this person is related, the relationship is debit, and of course they're on the same religion. All right, you know this is the this is the um, this is the part that gives them um, that relationship. All right, and it's not an act of this. This person was a good a good son or a bad son. No. Yeah. And so, um, and so this is the the part of that. There's no wasiya for wedith, and this is, comes from this is basically like the. Uh, it's very close to the actual wording of the hadith itself. Yeah. The next thing he says is what the Jews will see to min kulli malikin aqilin li kulli mutamalik. And so here he's talking about the for the actual um, the giving the money to something. So um, or like and giving this uh, who can do the actual wasiya. So like who can actually do this uh, wasiya of the the person who can do this is um, someone who is um, himmatic and that he owns this thing that he's giving the wasiya to. Like yeah, it has to be under his control. He can't give he can't do a wasiya with something that isn't his. As well as he says aqil and the person can't be like majnoon like they can't be crazy or insane because this is not something that would be um, held against them for what they do. And so, of course, he needs to be, um, for, for Kul, uh, he needs to be something that he owns, of course. Um, and also, he needs to be sane. Just as we talked about someone who does any type of tasarruf, any type of transaction, of course, like giving away money, this person needs to be aqil uh, when they're doing this. As, and he says, لِكُلِّ mutamallik. And what can he do the uh, wasiyah uh, for? Like, what kind of things can he give? Anything that is something that can be owned. And this is more general than something that can be bought and sold. Because we talked about we can't buy and sell dogs. But you can do a wasiya for a dog. You can say, my dog, when I, get, when I pass away, it goes to so-and-so. You know, that's, that's, that's fine for someone to do. And yes, this is not just. But this is something that you can own. It's mutamalik. Um, and so you can own this thing. And, and so this is of the, it opens it up uh, for the amount of things that you could do. Also, if you had like a, a slave that, were, that ran away, and maybe he's not, um, he's not with your, in your property right now, but he's a runaway slave, you can also do the wasiyah for him. Uh, you could say, uh, my slave that ran away, he's this guy's property when I die. You know, and if he gets some, he, it's his uh, in that case. Uh, 
but it's something that, um, of course, we wouldn't be able to sell him. We wouldn't be able to like sell this slave, but we could do a wasiyah for them. Um, and so he also, he also says, Wafi um, sabilillah. And also of the other types of um, uh, wasiyah, that someone can do the wasiyah in, uh, like, feasibilila, like in, in some type of, um, they can point it in a certain direction, such as for, like, um, jihad. For the people that go out to jihad, they could do the wasiyah for, for that. And of course, it would be given to the people that would divvy it up in the proper way for that thing. Or it could also be with the, the same thing it could be for, like, the poor people of someone. It could be for um, in different different types of things, and people would look into this and make sure that it gets to the right, um, to the right, um, like, and people that are for that. And so that someone can do um, that. And usually the, the term, fi sabilillah, in general, this term, when it comes up in the Quran and Sunnah, it almost always means jihad. Almost always. Like this terminology, fi sabilillah, almost always means jihad. And so occasionally some people will say fi sabilillah. And what they mean by it is like they, um, for the pleasure of Allah. But the, like the technical term, like the shari term, is almost always goes straight to jihad. And then the other terms come in secondary. They, they come in like, uh, yes, linguistically this means this, but the order for shara, like the order for shara, and this would say haqiqat um, shara, for this word is, um, is you know, jihad. And, that. and of course the person, and they would have to, they would have to for the wasiya itself, they would have to, um, they could either say, they could either say the wasiya to someone, and then, um, and it's best for them to say it to multiple people, so that it's not just one person that is a shahid, and then they could testify that this person said um, he wanted to do the wasiya this way, or he can write it down and have witnesses for that. All of these uh, ways are for the wasiya to be um, taken, but of course, if he makes the wasiya, then it's best for him to do this with multiple witnesses so that this thing actually gets done. And whether it's ri written, of course writing is, is better, um, or by saying it, both of, these, um, both of these are fine. And valid, yeah. And so, and he says here, and so here he says, وَتَسِحَّ الْوَسِيَّةُ إِلَى مَنِجْ تَمَعَتْ فِيهِ خَمْسَةُ شَرَائِقُ And so he's going to talk about the um, like to give the wasiya, who can be the overlookers of the um, of the wasiya, and and so of these things, of the person, uh, the the person that can actually uh, overtake the the wasiya and make sure that these things go um, go through, he says here. Like this is the making. You would say like this is the. He says wasiya here, but he also means like esot, which is making. This is the person who is giving. The, he's telling, after my death, I want these people to be in charge of uh, making sure this wealth is dealt with in this way. So this, this is called Esau. And um, so he says, Tasih al wasiyah he means here Esau, which is making other people the trustees, you could almost say trustees, like trustees over the wealth to make sure it gets to the other places. And for these people, and there needs to be five conditions. He says, So there's five conditions for these people to be actually made um, a, a wasi. And so the wasi, you have the musi, the musi is the person who's dying. And that, or the person that once he dies, this will happen. He's the one who tells. He's called the Musi. And then you also have the uh, the Wasiya, which you could also say is like the. Um, you would say the Wasiya itself is like the actual um, statement of what he wants to go where. And then you would also have the Musa, uh, the Musa uh, uh, la, like the person who was given to Musa la. And then you would have the the Wasi. The wasi with tashdid. This is the person who is entrusted, who is entrusted to make sure that this wasiya goes through. <laughs> and so he says, here's five conditions for the for the the wasi. Is what he means here. Is um, the first of these? He says al Islam. And of course, this is uh, um, the first things. Um, and this is for a Muslim, of course. If this person who who died is a uh, was a Muslim, then of course the the person who is a wasi has to be Muslim. If he's not a Muslim, uh, it's like from the Ahlul Kitab, then that's um, that's that's for them to do with it, between themselves. But for a Muslim, it has to be a Muslim that is the trustee over the Muslim's wealth. Um, and also the second one, of course, a balug. This person has to be balik. Um, he has to have uh, reached age of accountability. Well, akal, and he has to have akal. Well, hurriya, and of course, um, the hurriya is important because this person is going to be using money, and this person can't be um, entailed with multiple um, jobs. 
So a person who is, uh, uh, who is uh, in slavery, of course, he can't be entrusted with multiple things. Like this is something that's specific for someone who's free. And also he says, well, amana. And this is also important um, here. And what is better, uh, like uh, al-amana here, is al-adala, which means that this person is, uh, is, is solid in his deen, and he's not someone who is a fasik, like he's never done any of the major sins, and he also doesn't do um, sins that would, uh, that would make people look really bad at him, like something that's really nasty, even if it's not a major sin, but it's just something that would drop his status in the sight of men, uh, and, and the sight of like the people around him. And so this is the adana, that this person needs to be trustworthy. And of course, this is this makes sense because uh, a lot of times the the wealth that gets left um, in inheritance gets eaten up by people that have no um, they have no adana, uh, like they have no trustworthiness and they are um, evil people. So of course, for their, for this person to be made a, a trustee or a custodian of this um, of this wealth, he has to have this. It's it's, it's absolutely necess uh, necessary for this person to have this. And of course, the, the stories can go on and on and on of people that took people's money after their death and never gave it to the right, the right places. Um, and of course, um, the, there's a couple other conditions as well. And of the other, there's two conditions here is الاحتداء uh, إلى التصرف. And so like this person also needs to be um, able to do tasarruf properly. So of course, if, it, uh, if he's like, um, if he's a safi mubadir limalihi, like if he's someone who can't necessarily otherwise do uh, tasarruf, of course, in this case, he can't be a wasi. And also, the other one is adamu adawa minhu lil lil muwalla and and also that this person can't be of um, someone who is known to hate the person who is. Um, uh, the like the people that he's supposed to take care of like if he has the hatred between the people that he's supposed to take care of of course this would be something that stops him from that as, as well as he needs to be known uh, like this person actually needs to be known in that <clears throat> and so these are the this is the ahkam that the author here he brings about um, the wasiya and of, and of course the wasiya is, is a, a very important part and it's the the last chapter um, that technically would be like connected to the the transactions and whatnot, and of course the and it, he puts it at the end of the of the major kitab of um, of Mirath, and also then he has the wasiya at the end of that. And Allah Taala anam. Any questions before we move on? In the so the author now he's going to start up with the next uh, next category and as I mentioned before in the in the beginning the the books of fiqh are usually broken into four major categories the first category um, is ibadat the second category is muamalat which is like the transactions and then the third category is usually ahkam al usr or like al usra so like the things that have to have that are related to family family rulings and so of course this is very important for people that are looking to get married. And also, um, people that are going to, um, uh, they need to know the rights of the, the wife upon the husband and the husband upon the wife, and, um, and also study these things well so that they never fall into issues of thun between each other. And so, then the next thing we're going to go into is Kitab al Nikah, wa ma yata'alaku bihi min al ahkami wal qadaya. And so he's kitab um, nikah, and of course nikah is like the the the, the meaning of the, the word nikah is a dhamm, which is like bringing things together, and that's what it means um, uh, nikah in a linguistic term. And of course nikah has um, two meanings, and of these two meanings, one of them is the the act yatadamanu ibah tawat. Um, and this is the, the act itself, like the, the transaction or like the, the contract between them. And this is called nikah. And then there's another meaning of nikah, uh, linguistically as well, which is al uh which is like jima' or like intercourse itself. So this can, uh, nikah, can either mean the act or it can mean intercourse. These are two things it means in, in, in Arabic. And the, the view of the Shafi'i Matham is that this word nikah is haqiqah in the act. And majaz fil wat, and so this is the this is the the view of the Shafi'i when it comes to this word. So whenever nikah comes up in in any of the um, the any of the like hadith or in the Quran, it, it's hakika is always going to be in the act itself, not in the um, the the wat. 
بسم الله And so, of course, um, uh, so we're going to talk about uh, nikah. The first thing he's going to talk about is the hukum of nikah. What is its ruling? And of course, the ruling def definitely depends on the circumstances of the people around it. But in general, he says here, when nikah mustahabun. So, in general, nikah is mustahab. And this is the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And this is mustahab. For the, the first thing for this person is if this person is able to provide for the woman with her, with her mahr and, and he knows generally he's able to provide for her. This is when it's mustahab. So he needs to have this um, for him. And also uh, he needs to be able to, um, uh, he needs to have, and also like for this, he would need to do this in a means of like protecting him and his deen as well. Yeah. And so, and it's mustahab for him, even if he is a person who worships. So say this person is a, a person who is very busy in worship, and if he were, to get, he were to get married, it might create a busyness that he doesn't do as much worship as he was before, because he was mutafarrik lil ibadah. So even this person is uh, um, and uh, with a ibadah and worship and whatnot, it's still mustahab for him to get married. And this is also the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he that he was married, and he also said, "Ya ma'ashar al shabab, min istata'a min kumul al ba'a," which is like the be able to pay their whoever he says ma'ashar al shabab, which is like the 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 group of young young men, um, whoever is able from you to to pay like the the mahr and like to pay the costs of marriage and whatnot, fal yatazawaj. He says, "Fal yatazawaj." They have the lam al amr. Yet as always, and of course, this is not a wajib. With other, um, we have like other things that would take it away from being wajib, but we'd say that this is mustahab at least. Uh, and that this will help someone with their eyesight, like from not looking at what is haram for them. Uh, uh, and this is also another point for this aghdu lil basr, that this a, a woman that is that is a beautiful woman, she will only. She will only be something that keeps someone away from, or like that she will help this person from keeping their eyes away from what is wrong. If this person, or like she will keep, she will be satisfactory for him if he doesn't look at other things. But if this person is constantly looking at other women, that woman that he has, no matter how beautiful she is, she'll never satisfy him. So this is important that someone really thinks about like looking in their, their eyesight, especially for us men, because the the woman, no matter how beautiful your wife is or whatever, it will never do enough if the person doesn't look, if they don't keep their eyes like down. You know, if they're constantly looking at everything out there, in this case, their wife will never help them. And of course, that only the, the worse the situation goes with that person's eyesight, the worse their marriage goes as well. Everything else, and they will never be satisfied. But if they watch their eyes and they fear a lot in this matter, then a beautiful wife will be enough for them and will satisfy them in that thing. So he says here, for, um, the Prophet says, he says, فَإِن, uh, أَغَدُّ لِلْبَصَرِ This is like أَفْعَالِ um, Which is like, it's better, and it keeps his eyes, um, uh, it'll be something that he helps him with his gaze, and protect his gaze. And وَأَحْسَنُ لِلْفَرْجِ And also it's more, it'll protect him, and it'll help him with his, uh, with his private uh, parts. وَمَنْ لَمْ يَسْتُطِعْ فَعَلَيْهِ بِالصَّوْمِ And whoever can't do this, then he, sh then he, should, uh, then he should do um, a lot of fasting. Uh, yeah. And this is um, that this is something that will cut him off. Wijet. It's like something that will cut him away from, um, cut off his like strength or wanting to go into his shahwat. Uh, and this is the the meaning that a lot of those scholars have talked about this. <clears throat> and so also he says here this is mustahab. And there's cases where it is uh, makru. And of the, the times that the, the, uh, the Shafi'i will talk about that it's makruh is for someone who doesn't want that they don't like marriage or like they don't want to be married. Maybe they're sick. Maybe they have some type of sickness and they just don't have any desire for, for marriage. And the Shafi'i will talk about that in this case, if, they are, if they're like sick or, or something that they know that they're not going to have that or they are just unable to care for a woman. So if they ever if they took a woman, they wouldn't be able to give her like her mahr properly, or they wouldn't be able to care for her in general. That that, that they would make her life terrible. In um, that way, in this case, they would say that this is makruh for him. 
And, and of course, this is this is the view of the the Shafi Madam, and some people said no, it's not um, uh, it's not necessarily makruh, but um, but of course you look at the meaning of a nikah is one that the man would um, would would procreate, and also he would protect himself from zina, and also that the woman that's getting married that she would also have someone who keeps her like that gives her an uh, outlet for her shahwa. So if this person is never going to fulfill her, then this is something that maybe it's not a good thing. Uh, this person knows that maybe he has, uh, he has like a medical issue where he will never fulfill, fulfill her in any way. So this is kind of, uh, it would be like in this case, maybe makru for him to, to get into that situation. This is what the, the Shafi Madhab will talk about that. Um, in some of the cases where it would be makru. But in general, the, the asal is that it is mustahab. And so the next thing he's going to talk about, is going to talk about ta'addud. And <clears throat> And before we go into ta'addud, just a couple other things. And it's mustahab for him to marry um, someone who is uh, bikr, or like someone who's a virgin. This is better. Um, and the reason, in, in general, it's better from the, the hadith that the Prophet him, when he heard about uh, Jabir, uh, that he got married, and he asked him who he got married. And he said uh, that he married uh, like an older woman and whatnot. And he said, Halla bikr, tu la'ibuha wa tu la'ibuk. Like, why didn't you marry like uh, a virgin? that would play with you and you could play, you could have fun with her. Uh, and of course he had a reason, like um, and Jabir had a reason because he had kids already, he needed someone who was more mature to take care of his kids. So he had a reason for that and, he, and so if someone has a reason then it's, there's no problem with that. And of course there's never a problem with um, getting married to someone other than this, but this is something that is better and of course the, the bond will usually be stronger with someone who is their first time with someone than someone who's already been in multiple relationships. Like of course the bond will be different. But of course, uh, as we see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he married the first, of course, he married a widow. And then after that, he married, uh, he married like uh, divorcees and also one virgin, uh, Aisha radiallahu anha. And of course, there is um, none of these where it was only one that was a virgin in that case. So, um, of course, there is always a, a time and place for all of these things. And so, and also the other things that is most to have when he chooses chooses someone is that of course this woman is a, a person with good deen and this is the most important thing that the woman has good deen and that she's not a fasika. Um and this is of course that um, this this is one of the things that will actually keep the woman especially in this time of fitna it will be the thing that it can really save the a lot of hardship like when this woman fears Allah even if she doesn't like you she's still going to obey. Like there's times when a woman probably won't like the person when they're mad or whatever. There, and when this does come up, if she fears a lot, then this will keep away a lot of the other um, problems that could come on. But if she doesn't fear a lot, then this opens up the door to a, a ton of facet. Um, and of course, some, one that is beautiful, this is also um, also important in like uh, it's sunnah. And of course, beauty is according to the person who who likes. You know, every single person is different in what they consider beautiful. But it should be beautiful for the person who wants to marry her. And uh, waluda also is another one, which is that she can bear children. Uh, and this is also a, a, a good thing, of course, because um, this is something the Prophet ﷺ he says, "Tazawwaju al walud, al wadud." And wadud is the one who is loving. Uh, and so that he says that and verily he is um, he is going to be uh, showing his like the great um, uh, numbers and he's looking to show his great the great numbers with people mukathir which is like showing the kathra um, with uh, with us uh, from the rest of the umam of the other nations yom al qiyamah and so of course this is of the um, the good things and also having uh, nasiba is another one that is good as well for her to have a good nasib or like to have a good lineage. <clears throat> and so the, so the next thing he want, that the author is going to go into, he's going to go into ta'adud. And so he, he talks about wayyajuz. And notice here he says yajuz. Um, that the asal for ta'adud is an joaz. He says wayyajuz lil hur lil hurri ay yajma' bayna arba'i hara'ir. And so he says here for the hur, which is like a free man, he can, he can, um, and yajma, so he can have up to four wives. And so he says, and this is like uh, uh, the hurra, and is, would be like the jama of that would be hara'ir, for the women. So he can have up to four, uh, four wives in this. And this is yajus. And like in general, the, <coughs> the, the basic for like to add to it is it mustahab. 
or is it you know like what is its ruling? The the general uh, ruling is that it's, uh, it's muber. It's not. It doesn't necessarily have a. Um, uh, it's not necessarily must have for someone to do this. And an interesting um, an interesting fact is there was a uh, there was one of the one of the scholars or students of knowledge that was looking. He wanted to get together. He wanted to find how many of the the sahaba did taaddud. They actually had more than one wife uh, at a single time, and how many of them only had one wife. And he couldn't find any of them that didn't do taaddud. So he couldn't find every single one that he looked for. They saw Tatu. And of course, uh, this, is, this is just a fun fact for, for those out there. But of course, uh, this is also another point that uh, I will just um, pull out there is that the woman, as much as she, from her own um, self, she wants, there's jealousy that's within her from a fitri point, um, point of view, that she would never want to have another woman take some of her time from her, her husband and whatnot and have to share her, her rights with someone else. This woman can never have hate for this in Islam. She can have hate for herself, it happening to her, but she can't have hate for this thing in Islam. This is something that can take her outside of Islam uh, in, in general. If she says, I hate this in Islam, like hating something from the Sharia is one of the nawakir of Islam. And so someone should be very careful with some of the things. Maybe you don't like it. Maybe it's hard on you and you wouldn't want it to come onto you and you would hate it for it to come, like for a woman. You, you could say, yes, uh, she would hate for it to happen to her, but she can't hate the ruling in and of itself. Like that this is an Islam, if she hates that this is a part of Islam, then this is something that negates her iman in totality. So this is, important, uh, this is a very important part uh, for, for people to understand and to, to be mindful of. Uh, and and one of I was talking to one of the, the Egyptians, and he said, you know, uh, the 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 Muslima, like the the Muslim woman, she's she's good. She she she'll pray, she'll pray all of her salawat, and she'll she'll uh, she'll do psalm, she'll she'll fast, she'll go make hajj. All of this is good, but as soon as um, you talk about tadud, kafira. <laughs> you know, he's like, because as soon as you talk about Tad, then all of a sudden she just turns into like the worst thing in the world. And he's, he's kind of joking, but this is a serious issue though, in general, like that uh, we always, whatever the thing is that's in Islam, we have to accept it, that it's a part of Islam. Even if maybe we don't want this circumstance to happen to us, we have to, we have to accept that this is from Islam. Who is that guy? <laughs> <laughs> the web. <laughs> <laughs> No, but he, he totally cracked me up though. He was like, <laughs> but the, the women though have been affected with this thing. And so, um, but in general, this is something that you juice. And like this is, uh, you juice in a point that it's not necessarily, it's ibah. It, it's uh, it's mubah for, for someone to, to do ta'adud. And the women always has to, um, they have to uh, accept that this is a part of Islam and they can never hate that this is a part of Islam. As far as hating that it happens to them, that's another issue. That's, that's normal. Right. And I hope that's clear. The Egyptians are, they've fallen into, a lot of them have fallen into the one, the, the one woman only um, um, gate. Yeah, but the, it, and it's, it's, it's something that's out there, yeah. So the, uh, the next thing he talks about is for, this, we talked about the hur. So like the free person, he can have four. So for the, the abd, he says, walil abdi an yajma'a bain ithnatain. So for an abd, he can have two. And normally you'll find that the abd always gets half of the of the the free person, in a lot of uh, a lot of situations. And so the abd in this in this case he's allowed to have two, uh, and, and no more than that. And so the next thing that um, that he will go into. And he says, So there is, there is a, say someone is not able to afford the mahr for them to get married. All right? So they want to get married, but they can't afford the mahr for the women that are around. Uh, at the time when there, was, when there would be slave women, this was something that they could if they, with certain conditions, with these two conditions here they mentions, if they can't afford a free woman, then they could get married to a slave woman and it'd be cheaper for them. Of course, this slave woman is owned by someone else. So she has other responsibilities, but this person can, um, can fulfill his needs that he needs with her in this case. And so with these two conditions, he can marry other than a free woman. 
But in, in, in essence, he shouldn't be marrying a free woman. And the reason for this is if he has a kid, his kid's going to be in slavery. And it's, he's not gonna, it's not going to be a free kid. Because the, the woman is a slave. And so if she has a baby, then that kid that she has is going to also be a slave and owned by her master. And so this, would, this is also increasing the amount of slaves. So this is another reason why it would be like not necessarily the best thing for, for a man to go marry a, a slave girl. So there are certain conditions that have to be met before he can marry a slave girl, a free man. <coughs> the the man marrying a slave girl? No. Or the 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 woman when she has? <laughs> yes, except in certain circumstances, yes. If this was her master, yes. But in this case, she's owned. In this case, no, it wouldn't it wouldn't do this because he's actually adding something. That's not his in, in essence. He's adding, like when he, has, he brings in a baby to existence, mm. here, this baby is ultimately coming from something that's property. So it follows the property. As opposed to this person, was, it was his kid. Unless there's a couple of situations, say someone had an accidental intercourse. If someone had an accidental <laughs> intercourse, uh, if someone had an accident, they thought it was someone else, and so there's a mistake made, and now there's a baby. This baby... If the father was was uh, was free, this baby would also be free. There's, there's that's one of the situations. Or if there's the master as well, because of the father, yeah. But this person, he knows he knows when he's getting into this relationship. If he if he marries a slave woman, the slave woman in, in general, uh, her baby is going to be owned by her master. I feel like that's weird, though. Yes, so. It's it's basically the like. I, I don't know all of what the the I have to say on this particular issue, but it is the like it's a strong. I don't know of a, a, a huge khilaf here. Yeah. Within the Shadow method, or is this within? The in in general, I don't know of a I don't know of a big and there there probably is differences of opinion, no. but in general, this is one of the reasons why um, this would not be done. Yeah. But I feel like that that's that's a weak reason. Here. She's ultimately and this person is and getting involved with a piece of property. So this piece of property is owned and has responsibilities. And if this piece of property has more that comes to this piece of property, it's also going to be owned. Yeah. And so this is one of the reasons why at the beginning there's two different conditions. All right, like there's different conditions that have to be met first before this person can even marry someone who is a slave girl. Because the essence is that you wouldn't want to be increasing the slaves between like free, a free men to, to make babies that are, all, that are going to come out as slaves. This is not good. Like, this is not the best thing. Um, so, like, moving on here. He says, the first of these two conditions is one, Adamu Sadaq al hurra So, he can't have the Sadaq. Sadaq is the, um, the ability to pay for the, the Mahr, for a free woman. So, this person's a poor person. So, he doesn't have the ability to do this. And the second one is Khawfu Al-Anat. And this is what comes in the ayah. Um, for, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ مِنْكُمْ طَوْلًا and when an tawlan is like the ability to pay. Uh, an tawlan an yankihal muhsanati al mu'minat. Al muhsanat here means a free woman. Muhsanat comes in different meanings in the Quran. Here it means free woman. Uh, al mu'minat of the believing women. Then in this case, uh, it, then he has all of these, then he's allowed to do this. In dalika liman khashi al anata minkum. At the end of this ayah in Surah Tanisa, that Allah says, dalika liman. This is for liman uh, al anata minkum, and so this is for this person. So this is mukhassas for anyone. So it's for the person who also, upon the the fact that he can't pay, he also fears for himself that he's going to fall into al anat. Here is <laughs> falling into zina. So if he fears for himself that he's going to fall into zina, um, then in this case he um, he's allowed to to marry uh, like a, a slave girl. In this case. And so he has to have these con two conditions. One, he can't afford the marriage for the, um, for the free woman, and he also fears for himself that he's going to fall into zina otherwise. So with these two, then he can marry them. And of course, um, this, this would be understood from this, that he's not already married to a free woman. Like if he's married to a free woman that he can fulfill his desires with, then in case there's no, there's no reason for him to marry a slave girl as well. Because he already has an outlet for that. The because there's no turura here. Yeah, the kind of this is kind of it. But Allah gives it. Of course, this is something that is uh, mentioned in the Quran by Nas, like with it uh, by Nas. But yes, this is of the things that normally would be prohibited. But because of the need, 
mm -hmm. um, for to make sure that there's a way for everyone to fulfill their desires, um, that um, this is an option that is opened up for a free man that is not able to pay for, uh, um, for a woman, to like a free woman in this case. So this is something that's a leniency that's made for this reason. Um, yeah. And so the, this, these are the two um, conditions that are for someone to marry uh, a slave girl. And also it's, uh, it's important to, to, uh, to remember that Allah is very wise in all of the things. When we look at the Sharia, Allah is infinitely wise and Allah did not make us angels. You know, Allah knows that we are humans and that we have desires. And all of the ahkam that comes around for us is looking at the reality of the situation. Uh, that we do have desires and all of these things need to be taken care of and so that's why Allah gives us these things in these certain ways to make sure that everyone has uh, what they need to, to worship Allah and also to um, live the life as Allah created them. Uh, and so the next thing we're going to talk about, so let's see if we have, uh, we have time for this. Inshallah we have time. This is the then, right? right? So the next thing we're going to talk about is one of the most important things is the nadr. And so, like the the man, when is he allowed to look at uh, another woman, like an ajnabiya? So the, the author here he mentions here when nadru rajuli ila marati ala sabati adrub. So there's seven types of looking at another woman in seven different cases or scenarios. What he means here by Rajul, uh, Rajul is um, someone who is like a, he's like a, a man, like a full, uh, um, a grown man that is, has his akal, as opposed to like a, a, a kid and whatnot, that's different. Or, or like a man that is um, like a eunuch or that doesn't work, or doesn't have any desire and whatnot, he's different. Um, someone who has no, no desire sexually. So he says of seven types of the man to look at a woman is of seven types. The first one, نَذْرُهُ إِلَىٰ أَجْنَبِيَةٍ أَنْ بِلِغَيْرِ حَاجَةٍ فَغَيْرُ جَائِزٍ So the first type is a man looking at أَجْنَبِيَة. أَجْنَبِيَة is someone that he would be able to, um, is someone who is not haram on him in a, in a state of abadiyya, like that is not eternally haram on him. Such as like um, you have uh, like a mother or uh, a mother-in-law is eternally haram on this person. Or, or like his daughters, this is something that's um, there. And he says here uh, that for him to look at, those are all ma maharam. And so like for the, for the ajnabiya, this is someone that he would be able to marry. So say um, we can't marry two sisters at the same time. So just because um, someone is married to one of the sisters doesn't mean that he can look at the other. No. Because this is not in the, in the way of, this is a, if the circumstances were different, if he married someone else, or if he divorced her, he could marry her. So in this case, he can't look at her as well. He says, لِغَيْرِ hajja, And hajja is a reason. And this is, um, there's different levels. So there's like, um, of the things that would, um, that would allow him to look is like for hajja, such as, say someone is doing business with you and you need to know who this person you're doing business with because if anything goes wrong, you need to know who is the one that bought this car from you. So you need to make sure that this woman is who, who she is. So in this case, he can look at her. And, but of course, <clears throat> this is, um, he can look at her face and hands only. In the madhab, this is the face and the hands are the only thing that he's ever allowed to look at, even for hajja. Unless there's like a durura, if there's a durura, such as like um, there's no one, there's no other women to take care of this um, this woman, and she has like something like a medical procedure or something in this case, then it's allowed for the amount that's necessary, <coughs> nothing more. Uh, and of course, with precautions. Could you say from like a side perspective that certain medical specialties would be fard kifayi on the women? Allah. It's better, and it's better, and it's better for women to be um, like a gynecologist. It's much better for a woman to be a gynecologist than a man. But say there's no gynecologist except men. Well, could you say it's weird? Because that's great. It's weird. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's strange that a man would go into this profession. Uh, yeah. Allah Cities or whole countries gynecologists yeah. are just dudes. Allah Yeah. It's very crazy. Yeah.
Yeah, could you go to the... It's a Fardu Kifaya. Mm -hmm. I would have to... I, I'm not a mujtahid in this, so I can't tell you. But it's definitely something that should be done. Yeah. And to say that it's Fardu Kifaya, I, I need to do research. But it's definitely something that should be done. And, of course, like the woman should always look for a woman and exhaust her options <laughs> with a woman. No, like, they, they'll talk about this. So in the time that she's allowed to, she needs to exhaust her options, you know, and then she can, um, then she can have a man only for that case, and, of course, with supervision. Um, so, <clears throat> uh, and there's even there's other, well, inshallah, we'll talk about some of the other details as well. So here, the, and this is only for, as I mentioned, this is only for the hands and face, for the for the hajja, if there is a hajja for them to do business or whatever she, um, they're doing, uh, like you're buying and selling, or you need to ask someone something, or if a woman is learning from a man, then uh, or like a man is learning from a woman, and he needs to understand what she's saying, like not looking ever at someone when they're talking, can sometimes stop. There, there's a need, or like there's a need for that. And hajja here is something that's less than durura. Durura is even like um, the hajja is something that would be hard without it. It would make things hard without it. And durura is something that would make things very extremely difficult. Like life would be extremely difficult without it. That's a durura and, and a haja is something that life becomes hard without it. So these are, it's important that under, someone understands haja. And there's also things that are less than this, uh, such as like tahsinat, which is something that's better. It's nicer to have. No, this is not, if it's nicer to see her face and whatnot, no, this is not what we're talking about. We're talking about if there's a need then in this case, someone can look at her hands and face. That's for the, only for the need. And of course, and this is without shahwa. And never with shahwa are you allowed to look at another woman. Unless they're, of course, your wife. Um, <clears throat> Sorry. So you say hajj is something that you need. It's something that without it, it would create a difficulty. Okay, okay. Like, I need electricity. Yeah, this is hajj. Without it, you would be able to live. Yeah. But without it, it would, it would, it would be difficult. It would create a difficulty. But it's not like life is going to end without it. Or like everything is going to come to like a halt in your life without it. Maybe at some points electricity could be a durura if you have certain things that are dependent on it. But um, this, there's, a, there's a difference between it. The thing that would make life difficult without, or living difficult without it, this is haja. And the thing that would make life next to impossible, like extremely like, uh, hard, this is a durura. <laughs> And also there's two, there's, uh, uh, when we talk about haja and durura, the haja that is am gets put into the durura that is khas. It gets put in, so if there's a haja that is big that everyone would fall into, such as electricity nowadays. Without electricity for us, this is, this is a durura on a, on a collective scale, even though it might be on an individual scale, a haja. Mm -hmm. So the haja al am yunazil manzilat al durura al khas. And of course, like all of these, these are differences. So there's the hajjah that is am, and there's hajjah that is khas. And the hajjah that is am, you treat it as a durura that is khas, as opposed to um, uh, the, the opposite. And so this is when we go into like, um, as like Masal, when you talk about like maqasid um, al-sharia, this is important to understand what is the meaning of hajjah and durura, because a lot of things will be connected to this. And so here's the, we're talking about hajjah, that he's allowed to look at, um, that if there is a no hajjah, la yajuz nadr ilayhi. And so of course, watching television is not a hajjah. Watching the news, not a hajjah. For the most part, like uh, watching the news lady talk is not a hajjah. You know, and most of these things that um, people will, they'll be very easy about doing, this is not hajjah. And also on a screen or in person, it's the same thing. No difference between on a screen or in person. Um, and the, and this is this is like clear KS. If someone tries to break a difference between this, this is ridiculous. Yeah. And also the the second of the seven types that he mentions here, as he says, وَثَانِي نَظْرُهُ إِلَى زَوْجَتِهِ وَأَمَتِهِ فَيَجُوزُ أَنْ يَنْظُرَ إِلَى مَا عَدَى الْفَرْجِ مِنْهُمَا. So he says here that it's permissible for him to look at his wife and his uh, and like his slave girl. Uh, Except, and of course, the slave grows in a similar position to the wife, in that he's allowed to um, please himself with her. Uh, in this case, as long as she's not married. Um, in this case, uh, he's allowed to look at her, and to, and to everything he says here, فَيَجُوزَ أَنْ يَنْظُرَ إِلَى مَا عَدَى الْفَرْجِ So everything except the farj, 
Um, and he says here, minhuma. And this is the, the view that he brings here. And what he means by la yujuz, he means jawaz mustawa tarafain. And so like mustawi tarafain, which means like uh, yajuz, as in like it's the same, it's ibaha, or like it's, it's mubah. So is he allowed to look at it as in like there's no, it's not bad or it's not good. He's not going to get a reward for it. He's not going to be leap for, it's not going to be makruh either. And the and here they would say it's a makruh without a reason. Like without a reason to look at the, the farj, it would be makruh. If there's a reason such as uh, like uh, for, for pleasure and whatnot, this is something that's not necessarily haram. And of course it's not haram because this person's halal, but it's not even makruh. Uh, if there's a reason for that, such as like shahwat. But some, some of the scholars, they would talk about like um, someone who looks at a, a woman too much, um, just that this area might be bad for them. You know, like might mess them up and maybe make them not like her as much. So like just too much like straight looking. But of course, like this is, this is, uh, this is halal and, and she is halal and everything from her is halal for, um, for the man to please himself with. Can you go over that? Like Jews occasionally will mean la, uh, that it's not la Jews that it's makuru. La yastawi at tarafain. So he said, um, at tarafain, so you have the amr for something and you have the nahi for something. And these two, don't, they're, not the, they're not the same. There's a little bit of nahi on it, but it's not quite all the way. There's like a weaker sense of um, saying it. And he, I think he says this because this is like steering it um, like al Khatib, al Shirbini, he kind of steers it into like that it's makruh. How do you derive that from uh, reading the text? This is from the method itself. Okay. Yeah, and occasionally the, the, some of the, the sayings of the, of the people in the method, when they say lay a Jews occasionally, they mean like ja'iz, it, it, ja'iz means that it is mubah, which means it's equal if you do it or don't. So you would say ja'iz is different than makruh. Mm -hmm. Even though makruh, you're allowed to do it. There's no ithm on the person for doing it. They're allowed to do it, mm -hmm. but it's not the same. You get a reward for leaving it. If that makes sense, sir. So you have the idhan, in the uh, Yeah, and it's it's kind of looking at the and there's there's some differences of the of, of opinion in the in the Shafi Madhab when it comes to this, um, but it, it would be makru in this case is what um, what he means to say or what is the the view in the Shafi Madhab that it'd be makru to look at it and this is without a haja or without a need, bila uh, haja for yukra another ilahi bila haja. And so this is what he's, uh, this is what uh, the Khatib al Shibini says in Al Ikna that it's, it's makru to look at uh, the farj without a need. Uh, and, and Allah uh, knows best here. And this is for the, the, wife, uh, the wife and the slave girl. And the third thing he says is And he says for the third type. That it's permissible to look at the the wet al maharim, which is the um, all the people that he's not allowed to uh, marry, in a in a sense of like uh, ever, he's never allowed to marry these people. That's a maharim, a mahram, um, and so and also the the emma, like if he had a slave girl that's um, married, then in this case it's also like this. Inshallah, we'll stop here and we'll we'll go to salam and resume in just a second. Inshallah. Alhamdulillah, he was a law, was a man, and being a Muhammad, and he was a Hihi, a Jemaine. So we'll pick up to where we left off. We left off in the, we talked about the third thing was that it's impermissible uh, for the things that were like the nether of looking at uh, women. When is it permissible and when is it not? So the third one that he mentions here is he says, Natherhu ila the wati maharimihi, au amatihi il muzawaja. So uh, these are. This is one category, which is looking at the ones who are mahrams for him, or um, one of the, <clears throat> or a slave that is married. A married slave is different than the first slave we talked about, just like the regular slave, but here he adds al muzawaja. So she's married to someone else. So, of course, that. That means that he's not allowed to have uh, any intercourse with this, uh, with this woman. She is um, for this other person. <clears throat> So in this case, um, there is the the ruling is different. And here, what he says here, he says, "Fayjuzu fima adab ma baina surrati wal rukba." So he says it's permissible to look with these, with this category, with the maharim, and also this at what is between the belly button and the rukba, 
this is the view of the Shafi'i Madhab. And of course, in all cases, in all, all times and places, any looking with shahwa at anyone other than a wife, or like a, a, the Emma that was mentioned before, it's all haram with shahwa, mahma can. Like any, any maharim, anything, all this is haram with shahwa. There's no difference of opinion with this. Um, and so, but say, uh, say one of these was breastfeeding. In the Shafi'i Madhab, they would say this is permissible for them to see. And in the, the Hanbali Madhab, which is like a safer Madhab, they would say no. And like the, only the things that are shown and during her working. Like normally what would be shown while, while a woman is working, such as like her arms, forearms. like her forearms and whatnot, her arms and some of like the calves and whatnot, mm -hmm. this is fine. But anything other than that should not be looked at. Um, and of course, like from adab and whatnot, this is this is what should be uh, applied. But of course, um, the Shafi Madhab, they they look at the 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 surah between what is the surah and the rukba. This is um, what they would say is that um, aura uh, in this case when it comes to the maharim. And of course, all the in general, people should be um, should be modest with their family and whatnot. And like the like this is a like while this is a view here. It's not to say that women should be running around in short shorts. Of course not shorts, like the short shorts and whatnot. Uh, uh, like this is not permissible for a mother to be in front of her kids in shorts that are showing more than her, that are showing any bits of her thighs. Like this is not permissible. Or, or like something that is showing any bits from her belly and whatnot. And, and both methods, whether you go on the safer method of the Hanbalis or you go on the, the Shafi method, which is more open, it's not permissible. Because anything between the belly button and the, the knees, it's all, that's the rukbah. The knees, any between, anything between the belly button and the knees is all haram to look at. What are the medical methods? Do you know what they say? I'm not for sure. Okay. But I don't think anyone goes more than this. I'm not, I'm not for sure that anyone goes more than this. I haven't looked at all of their, um, their views. But usually the two main views are this view or the, um, or the, the view of the Hanabila. Um, that I that I know that they say which is anything that is shown while working. You know what they're doing? Not exactly for sure. Yeah. <clears throat> and I believe there are there are like some types of um, there is some type of like hadith that come in the meaning between what is between the 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 belly and the uh, and the knees. Mm. There's a hadith for this, which is uh, what is what's used. But uh, I, I don't know the hadith right now personally. So, so here, this is what is, is mentioned here for the third type. And of course, all of this never with any shahwa. This is with no, no difference of opinion. Uh, and so then the next thing he says here, and rabia another li ajlin nikah. So this is another for a woman that he wants to marry. Fayajus ilal wajhi wal kafain. Fakat. You know, like so, it's it's permissible for him to look at the. Um, he says yajus, and here it's actually um, mustahab. Mm. He says yajus to look at the the one he wants to marry, or that he's um, thinking about marrying and whatnot. In this case, it's permissible for him to look at the uh, the face and the hands, like to see. And of course, like the face is to see if she has like you can see like the skin, you can see like her eyes and whatnot. If there's something in the eyes, um, that would be like attractive for this person. This is this is permissible for him to look. Uh, and to see that, and as well as the, like in general, like to see like the, when he looks at the hands, he can see how much like, like thickness or thinness, like if she's skinny or, or if she's a little <laughs> bigger. This is something that he can usually tell from the hands and also from the, like the skin itself. Is it something that's soft and whatnot? These are things that would normally tell him about the rest. But of course, like the chef, he met them, they would say that no one is allowed to like, look at the rest of her body and ponder it and whatnot. In this case, no. Like in general, you can see, like everyone, no one will miss like the general shape or like the build of her, but no one should be looking at uh, like her body in, in this case. Um, just like the hand, face, and the wedge. And this is the, the Shafi Matab here. And this is for the sake of Nikah. And this is Mustahab. It's, uh, it's Mustahab. <clears throat> and and the, the face and the hands they'll talk about, like the Shafi's, they'll say, this is, this is good enough for him to get an idea. This is a good enough idea. The face and the hands will give him everything he needs to know. Um, and so then also the, the fifth type of looking, he says, Al Khamisu another Ulil Mudaweh. This is the the looking for Mudawa, which is like um treating for like medical treatment. Uh, he says here, uh Fayajuzu ila al Mawal the il lati yuhtaju ilayha. And so and this is all of it is with the haja. Like if there's a if there's a need for this thing, then this is permissible. 
as opposed to anything other than this particular area. Uh, so um, say if someone needed to look at just like a part of the belly um, for a certain issue, then he would never look at anything other than this. You know, uh, and of course this is for um, uh, like a, this is this can go both ways for the man and the woman. So the like if a man needs to get treated and there's only a woman nurse, same thing. It's allowed for it's allowed for him to to get looked at by the woman nurse, uh, and also for the it goes the other way around for like a woman to get treated by a male uh, from a male doctor or something of that sort. But of course they should always have um, uh, like a mahram with them or a, or a spouse or a, a woman that is trustworthy with them. <clears throat> and so and also. Um, two women, two women along, uh, like if we want to talk about what is khulwa uh, or khalwa, this is uh, with uh, the Shafi Matam, is that a man, if he is with two women, this is not khalwa. So if a man is with two women, it's, it's not khalwa, um, if, as opposed to him being with one woman. All right. And the same thing otherwise, uh, other ways as well. So if there's two men and there's one woman, that's not khalwa as well. Allah ta'ala ala. So um, the next thing that he's going to talk about, this is of course for, for medical treatment, and this is uh, because of the things that are needed from this. This is permissible, of course, someone, as I mentioned before, they should always try to get a woman doctor first. And of course, not just a woman doctor, a Muslim uh, thika, like that this, this is a, this is a, uh, like a solid, uh, uh, solid woman and doctor that is um, solid in her deen. Um, and this would be the first thing, and not a fasika. And then if she can't find a, 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 a woman that is of this, um, a good Muslimah, then in this case, a fasika. Or in this case, or, and if she can't find that, then someone from Ahl, uh, from like the Ahl al-Kitab and whatnot that isn't um, that. And then you would go to like the men and whatnot. Um, <clears throat> and the next thing he mentions for the, the sixth one, in this case, he says, النظر للشهادتي أو للمعاملتي فيجوز. And so he also says, and of course this kind of falls into the, the understanding of the first one, but he says, looking for the sake of shahada, which is making sure that someone does the, um, they know who this person is, and when they're either giving the shahada or they're giving, they're doing shahada on someone, or lil mu'amala, and like when they're doing a transaction with someone, this is permissible. Of course, this is with the face and the hands. Um, <clears throat> And uh, and then the, the the seventh one that he mentions, uh, which is the last one here, he says, was sabiyah another ila ila al amati inda btiyaha. So inda btiyaha, she can. So if you're trying to buy uh, like a female um, slave, then in this case you can look at her. Um, of course, to make sure that you make the like if if there is this purchase that this person knows what he's buying. You know, and, and then he knows that this is something that is uh, like this. This 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 is a, a woman that he wants to buy in this case, and he says here, فَيَجُوزَ إِلَى الْمَوَاضِعِ الَّتِي يَحْتَاجُ إِلَى تَقْلِيبِهَا. And so, um, in this case, he's allowed to look. He's allowed to look at, at her in the like in anything that she, he would need to like know um, know what he needs to know about her, like the things that would that would change and whatnot. And this would only be one one look that he would look at. He would do one look. He wouldn't just keep repeating the look. He would, and if he wants to see, he looks once, and then he's okay. If this is the one look, and he knows, then he would make his decision on that. But he wouldn't repeat his look. And also another another point um, to to note note in the the Shafi Metham is that when it comes to looking. We talked about what the man looking at the woman and all of this. The Shafi Madham is that the woman is not allowed to look at the man except for Hajjah. The same thing. Um, because we have the, the ayat that comes for the, for the men is uh, first, um, Kullil Mu'minina Yaguddu Abasarahum. And so we have this, and then Wakullil Mu'minati Yagdudna Min Abasarihim. So this is the same thing. So it's the same for the men and the woman, to, that the woman would not look at men. And this is the Shafi view. The, the Shafi's, um, when, they, when they look at this, they would say that the woman should not be looking at a man, except in the case of Hajjah, and otherwise it's haram. If there's no reason for her to look at a man, then it's haram. And if there, of course, everyone has agreed that if, if it's with Shahwa, then it's haram. Everyone's agreed here. But like to look at a man without a Hajjah, without Shahwa, this is, in the Shafi Madhab, this would be haram. 
Um, and of course, when they talk about the, the hadith of the, what the other people would come up with is they would say the hadith of Aisha, where she uh, was watching the, the Ethiopians mm -hmm. um, do like their, their practicing in the, in the masjid. And she was watching until the Prophet and told her, have you had enough and whatnot. And so they would say, okay, this is, this is a sarif that takes it away from being wajib to something that's mustahab. And the Shafi, some of the Shafi's, they would, they would say, how do you know that she was actually looking at them? It wasn't just enjoying her time with the Prophet And she was actually looking at them or just kind of noting what was going on. How do you know that he, she was actually looking at men? And she wasn't just seeing things that were happening in general, which is different. Wait, so this is, this takes it from being, um, the people that say that it's not, that it's not, um, or haram, it would take it from being haram to makruh. Yeah, afwan. Uh, and so this would be the thing that would take it from being haram to makro. Uh, from the ayah, the ayah it's, it's a nahi, and the nahi yaktadil uh, al hurma. Yeah, and so you'd have to have something, some delil that comes up that says it's um, that way. And they would say, yahtamil. Uh, was she actually looking at the men themselves, or was she just looking at, in general, the operation that was going on, or what was going on? Uh, and so, and of course, like, um, for someone to see what's going on in general without looking at tafasil, like not looking at details of a woman, but just seeing the general of what's going on, this is not like uh, a problem. It's the problem is actually looking in, gen uh, looking in detail at the woman. Um, and of course, this, this is where the problems actually arise from that. Uh, and of course, understanding what is haja and what is not, this is also uh, a key point when it comes to this particular bet. And inshallah, we'll call it uh, for today at this, uh, at this, because the next part that we're gonna go into, we're gonna talk about the actual act of zawaj, or nikah, and we'll talk about that and the, the different conditions of it and who needs to be there. Um, and we'll, we'll call this for today. Wallahi ta'ala a'lam wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala anhi wa sahbihi ajma'in.